I'm Emily. Uh, I'm a community engaged artist. Uh, so that means that I mix with communities in order to create art, events, and performances. Uh, as Teresa mentioned, I'm an uh, arts and educational administrator at Vivo Media Arts Center. And I'm really interested in spaces and communities and uh, intrinsic motivation. So what makes people want to engage with learning? So one of my first experiences working in this uh, community-engaged way was going to the uh, Vancouver Hackerspace. It, has anybody heard of the Hackerspace? Woo! Woo! Yeah, OK. So it's basically like a clubhouse where you talk about math and science. Uh, and my first time going there, I was at the Hacker House, and where there's th uh, these things called lightning talks, which are three-minute talks about everything from Isaac Newton to burritos. And it was my first experience in a really inclusive, non-competitive math and science environment, and it was really based on storytelling. <laughs> so there's a real activist component to the hackerspace. It's, there's kind of this whole idea about opening up the box and shaping the world around us and engaging with technology instead of like just watching it passively unfold around us. So as I was listening to these hackers talk about Isaac Newton and burritos, uh, I, was, I was knitting. I was into textiles at the time. And I started getting really curious about the fibers that I was working with and, and thinking about you know, opening up the box with the fibers. And for some reason, it started to feel relevant for me again. Whoa. <laughs> what? <laughs> so yeah, that's right. I like this world just exploded for me, right? Like, I just started getting really intrinsically motivated to learn so much more about these textiles I was wor working with, and I got really interested in the storytelling and the culture and the real world engagement that I saw at the hackerspace. Um, so for this talk, I've organized kind of my engagement into three areas, which are head, heart, and hand. Uh, and those things like define my artistic practice and also like a new approach to learning. So the first thing is hand. Uh, so it's also like grounding to the present moment, connecting with the real world in a physical way. Um, and I started noticing that different physical actions resulted in different thoughts. Uh, so I applied this, this formula to it. So when I do these things, knitting, spinning, felting, crocheting, weaving, and dyeing, I feel curious, focused, engaged, and connected. Uh, and working in this process-based way uh, wasn't really about the end product. It was more about creating an experience for myself. Uh, and I think often when we're teaching and learning and making things, we forget about you know, physically doing things and we get stuck in our heads or we get stuck in other areas. So this physical contact really connects us to the world. So the next area is the heart. <laughs> uh, so from this physical practice that I was working on, you know, working on spinning and felting and weaving, I started to build, uh, oops, ooh. <laughs> so I started to build community. I started craft nights at the Vancouver Hackerspace and other people's houses, and pretty much everywhere you can have a craft night. Uh, and I was really excited to share this love that I found for myself with others, and I realized that I really wasn't alone. Uh, and it was really exciting to learn and connect and cross-pollinate and, and get to know like different projects that were happening. So I started to see textiles as a language, and that they, they really denoted like like the symbology, the patterns, the stitches, the colors, they really communicated a message. And they related to this like tribal thing. <laughs> and this process of making, like the process of making, knitting a sweater, making a blanket, it, it brings culture. So there's a whole culture that gets created around making. And it's within this culture that I think we really learn. So I could suddenly go to Peru and connect with these ladies. Like, they had drop spindles that were the opposite way as me, and they were laughing at me. And we could exchange ideas even though we didn't speak the same language. And really, like, this textile culture exists on the schoolyard. Um, and 
I had really vivid memories of making these friend, who else has made these friendship bracelets? Yeah, I had like kids, and this was like an intense thing that I used to do with my friends, but it sort of stopped once I reached a certain age. And I, you know, I put away my knitting needles, I put away my friendship bracelets, and I got really serious. <laughs> uh, and it really wasn't until I started going to the hacker space and reading from like the internet and craft magazine and getting to know these, these communities both online and through my friends that I started to see how it was relevant. So we've outsourced this culture and turned it into a mass marketplace and 97% of our, our clothing is outsourced to developing countries. With a horrible cost to our environment, humanity, and we currently have a fast fashion diet. So I spin because it connects me to the process. Uh, my relationship with textiles has profoundly changed since I started doing this. And I don't really follow trends anymore. Uh, for me, fashion is more about communication and co-creation. And it empowers me to, like, I feel totally comfortable ripping apart clothes, reworking things. And, and making things in a way that communicates my own expression. And basically, I, I have a voice. And that, that was a really uh, important, impactful thing for me. And yeah, I can more deeply identify with this statement as a result of you know, doing these things. So because I'm engaged with my, my heart and my hand, I'm motivated to learn about new concepts in math and science and to understand the greater context or the greater context. So like the hows and whys, and, and how things fit into a world rather than just isolated stories. So I started engaging with concepts in chemistry like, like pH, and how pH can affect the colors that I'm producing when I'm dying. And that's like dying color, like wool. <laughs> so <laughs> I get that, a lot of people ask me, they're like, natural dying? Ooh. It's like, no, 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 it's like colors. Um, and yeah, so this, this, and the important point with this is that, like, I have a reason to care about pH, I have a reason to think about chemistry, and I have a reason, I have a, a concern and care for these materials, so I have, in this deep, deeper connection with the materials leads to deeper learning for me. I've experimented a little bit with computer programming, uh, I've played around with the Lilypad Arduino, which is a microcontroller. Uh, I made this badge that lights up when you wear it, and I wear it sometimes when I ride my bike. Uh, and it's, it's just a fun project. It's just about playing and sharing and not being afraid to fail. Like, I just got lights to blink up and woo! <laughs> I also found myself learning about microbiology. Uh, I went to uh, Peru a, a few years ago and, and met with, so just like the, the hack space in Vancouver, there's a fab lab in Lima which is like the MIT version of a hackerspace. So it's like much more academic and it's in an art gallery. Uh, and I met with one of the members there and his name was Ben Ohm. And we shared stories about maker culture and spinning and knitting and jungle philosophy. And we drank Pisco Sours. It was awesome. <laughs> and he really helped me draw a spiritual connection uh, to like textiles and microbiology and I had this new understanding of the position that humans have in the world and how it relates to microorganisms. And I was listening because I really cared. I, I started getting into this lady, Lynn Margulis, and he introduced me to her and her discoveries about the mitochondria and the move from simplified to more complicated cells and that this had to do with this process called symbiogenesis. So this motivated me to learn more about human evolution and our place in the world. <laughs> And the important thing here is that engaging with the materials that I care about resulted in me caring about learning about these things. <laughs> so, uh, so in school, uh, the cultural context of learning often has to do with a lot of competition. There's a lot of smart kids, and subjects can be gendered. People can, uh, you know, socioeconomic status affects your grade and skill levels, and there's all these cultural factors that make up a classroom. Multiple choice, exam, uh, multiple choice exams don't promote deep learning, the kind of learning that I was experiencing. I used acronyms to remember like, things like the mitochondria, 
And I wasn't connected to the fact that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell and how cool that is, right? You know, goldfish knows. <laughs> And I memorized everything. And it was a little bit scary, and I felt a lot of pressure. And yeah, and I just didn't really learn in that same way. So what I propose is that I believe that we should engage, we should create more engaged curriculum and human experiences that engage with the head, heart, and hand. And this relates to adult learning as well. We should form de deeper connections and engage with the subject with our whole bodies instead of just our heads. We should create and shape culture, participate with others, build community, build relationships, and have conversations over Pisco Sours. We should have an actual impact on the world. We should create real change that comes from conversation and culture. And the industry is really just one side of it all, yet it shapes so much of our behavior. So uh, I'm a huge proponent of this thing called the STEAM curriculum, which was mentioned in the previous, previous talk. And I did, woo! <laughs> so it's basically an arts-based approach to learning about the world. And I believe that uh, a, like a good student, like a good curriculum creates true literacy. And that it, like creating, we create a more democratic world if we engage with our world. And I think that we need to take more time to understand and connect with the world around us so that we care more. And that's all I got. Yeah.